Okay, so welcome back. This is part two in our series where we're going to show you how to do something very simple and easy. And it's something that's really important. If you're not already doing it, you should probably think about doing it. And that is backing up the important files and folders on your computer. And especially when we show you how easy this is, uh, there's not much reason not to do this. What we're doing is we're basically taking any new and updated files on your computer and backing them up to either another drive on the same computer or to another computer on your network. And that's called synchronization. Now, for some reason, a lot of people think they need to buy some commercial software that does things like incremental backups and it keeps copies of every change and it encrypts your files. So when your hard drive fails, you somehow have to figure out how to get that software installed again and unencrypt all your files. And I think most people don't really need that. They just need synchronization. I, one of my first videos on this channel is talking about synchronization and how great it is because it basically just copies your folders to a new directory, a backup directory. They're not encrypted. You can look at them and they're ready to go as soon as you repair your, your failed hard drive. So in this video is part two. We're going to dive in deeper to the code to show you how to set this up. And it's really important you look at the first video in this series where we go through the all important design phase. So if you want to do this in a different language other than C Sharp, which we're using, the concepts are there and it'll be easy to do it in any language. Now, previously, we talked about a couple of things that apply to this particular synchronizing effort. One is uh, if you're going to synchronize to another computer, another drive on your network, uh, we did a video showing how to interact with your other computers in C Sharp and how to access the drives and the folders. We also talked about this application, which comes with Windows. It's been with Windows since the 90s, and it's called Task Scheduler. And we're going to use this with our application that we're going to develop in C Sharp. And basically, Task Scheduler is really nice because you can say, hey, I built this executable, this application, and I want you to automatically run it in the background every day or week or month. So I don't even know that it's running, but it's running in the background and it's automatically checking if there are any new or updated files or folders and it's backing those up. So we did another video showing you how this Task Scheduler works and how easy it is to set it up. And again, it's free. It comes with Windows. Now, in this video, we're going to show you the core of the code that we're going to use to implement this. And here is um, something we talked about in the previous video. What we've got is a CSV file where the user can specify, like in this case, I've got two lines. Each one is what's called a rule that says, in the first rule, I want to take all of the files and folders in this path, D documents code library, all the files and folders under that code library folder. And I want to copy them if they're new or if they're updated, copy them to this location after the comma. And that is the shared folder of another computer on the network called HP Laptop. And I want to copy everything into test folder. And once it's done that, it will go on to the next one and it will do the second rule copy the files and folders from this folder to the F drive on this computer and do the exact same thing. So here is the application we're going to show you how to build. Um, I've only made one or two very minor changes to add one more feature that we didn't have in the beginning video. And we're going to go through this and show you how it works. So as we said before, we've got some using statements, using system collections. We're going to use lists system diagnostics. We're going to use a stopwatch system IO for accessing the files and folders and link language integrated query for doing some link stuff. And we've basically got a to do list. We've got some properties, a few properties we talked about previously, our main static void main. And then we've got a handful of methods that are going to do the actual work. And again, this is just going to generate. This is a console application, not a Windows Forms application. So it's just going to generate a bare exe of this application. And we can right click on the project and go to open folder in File Explorer. And you can see you go into bin and we did a release and file sync console.exe. So we just tell the task scheduler, hey, run this file sync console.exe every day in the background, whatever time we want. And it will run this application, do the backups. 
So one change I made from the previous video is we've got this rule class, which basically is a class that holds all of the properties associated with a rule, like the rule number, the source path string, the target path where you want all the files to go. Um, I've added one Boolean, which is, is that target directory available or accessible? So for example, we are in one of our rules, we're saving to a another computer on the network. Well, what if that computer is turned off and it's not accessible? Well, I've got a target accessible for each rule that tells us, yeah, we can access it or, or no, we can't. So we can use that in running through our rule to say, hey, if it's not accessible, don't bother, just go on to the next rule. And then we've got an elapsed time for each rule. And then we've got some integers that give us feedback on how many new folders we created, how many new files were created, and how many files were overwritten. So same as last time, I've just added this Boolean target accessible. So again, the properties we said before, rules path, that is the path for this file, which has the CSV telling the application where to copy the files from and to. And then we've got the log file we're gonna be generating. It says, hey, everything worked. This is how many files we dealt with. And then we've got a list of these rule class objects called rules. And then in our main is the same as we had before with one minor change. So the first thing we do is we get the rules from file. We run a method and that will grab from the file and get us all set up and populate the rules that we have in the file as rule class objects. And then for each var rule in rules, we're going to go through and do what we did last time, define the source folder using directory info, and then do a stopwatch restart so we can time each rule how long it took. And the only thing I've added is this if statement um, where we have the target accessible. We're going to check whether it's accessible. And if we can't get to that other computer on the network, this is going to be false and it's not going to do all the updating and it will just save to the log file that says, no, we couldn't find it. Otherwise, it's going to do update target directories where we feed it the rule and the source folder and then update target files where we do the rule and the source folder. And these will do all the folders and subfolders and sub subfolders and update any new or updated files and folders. And then when that's done for all of the files and folders, it will stop the stopwatch and then save it to the log file and then go back and do the next rule. So what we're going to talk about now is the actual methods that are good to do all this work. So we've got the first one is get rules from file. This method reads lines from the CSV text file, like we said before, where each line represents one rule and contains the source path comma target path strings. Now you can add to this, but this is just the very basic where we've got the source and target. For each line or rule, it instantiates a new rule class object and initializes its properties. So what we're going to do is use a stream reader to read that CSV file. We're going to call it SR is a new stream reader using that rules path for that rules file. We're going to define a line as a string and then we're going to loop through that file using a sr.readline. And while that is not a null line, while there's actually text in that line, we're going to go through and process it. Now, what if there's no text, but there's an empty line, an empty character? What we're going to do is we're going to say if that string is null or empty, we've already checked if it's null, but this is checking if it's empty. If that's false, then we're going to go through and process. Otherwise, we're just going to jump out of it. So if string is null or empty, that line that we read is false. Then we're going to define a new rule class. We're going to get a string array of the two paths, the source and target, using a line dot split with the comma. Then we're going to populate the properties in this rule class with those values. We're going to take the path to zero that we just read in and apply it to the rule.source path. The paths one is the target path. Number of rules is rule.number. And then we're just going to zero out the number of new folders that are going to be generated, number of new files, and the number of overwritten files. We're going to start those out at zero. 
And then once we've got all the information on the rule, we can check whether that target path is accessible. So we have a little method down here we'll talk about where we pass it that rule with all of these properties and say, hey, can we even get to that path? And then um, we're going to say, okay, rules.add, that rule, increment the number of rules that we have up here and go on and do the next rule. And we can have 20 rules if we want, but this is going to process each one of them. So now we can say, how do we do this check target accessible? So here's check target accessible. We feed it the rule. This will check to see if the target path directory is accessible in case, for example, it refers to a shared network folder and the network computer might be off or the share hasn't been enabled. So for a shared network folder, this target path might look something like, in our case, backslash, backslash, HP, HP laptop, backslash, test folder, backslash, and we might want files and folders to be added to that path. So to do that, we're going to define a directory info object. We're going to use the rule.targetPath, that path we have here, and assign a directory info object. And we can use the dot exists. If that directory exists, then we can say, yes, it is accessible. If not, then we can't access it. So we're going to say, hey, the target's not accessible. Ignore that rule and move on. So really very straightforward way to find out if we can even read and write to it. So now that we have read the rules from the file, the next thing is for each rule in that list of rules, we're going to define the source folder is a directory info where we use the rule.source path. And that's defining a source folder that we're going to copy from. And then we're, we're defining the stopwatch, restarting it. And the one change I've made is if the rule.target accessible, we're going to update the target directories, rule. and source folder, and same with the target files. So let's take a look at the target directories and target files. So update target directories. Um, any directories or folders in the source folder will be created in the target folder if they don't already exist. So this is just doing the folders or the directories. So first we're going to get an I enumerable of the directories in the specified folder if there are any. So source folder list is folder, which is a directory info, dot enumerate directories. And that should give us a system collections generic source folder list. So that's going to give us all of the folders in that uh, source folder. So if the source folder list dot count is greater than zeros, if there actually are subfolders, then for each folder under the specified folder, get a path to where the folder should be located on the target directory, use the source folder path, but replace the root of the source path with the root of the target path. For example, so if my source folder path is D documents code library, and I want to copy C sharp classes slash sub one over to the target, but the desired target folder path is D document sync test C classes sub one. We extract the C classes sub one part by removing the root of the source path, leaving only this C sharp classes sub one, which we then append to the target path to get the final target path of D document sync test, blah, blah, blah. So we have to do some string parsing in this to get the uh, desired target. So for each bar, FLD in source folder list, each folder in the source folder list, we're going to say get target folder path. And that is a method we have where we pass it the rule and this FLD or folder. And we'll look at that get target folder path down here. But it's basically going to get the path to the target folder. And if the directory exists and the target path is false, we're going to say create directory in the target path. And then for our output log, we're going to say rule dot number of new folders. We're going to increment that because we just created a new a target folder. And then we're going to do update target files using the same rule and folder. So we're going to recurse through this to make sure we've got all the subfolders and files and the sub subfolders and so on. So then we do update target directories. We're going to look at these two update target files and update target directories. And this is basically just going to recurse through all of those. So here's update target directories. The next one is update target files. 
if source file list equals folder dot enumerate files, and we're going to do the same thing. If there's actually files in that source file list greater than zero, for each file in the source file list, uh, string target path is get target file path. Again, it's a method we will show in a bit. We pass it the rule, the folder, and the file. If file exists is false, then we're going to copy that file to the target path and then increment our log numbers so we know how many new files were copied. And here is where we determine if it's an updated file. If the file dot last write time, and that's a system info property where you can get the last write to the last time it was written to disk, which implies the last time it was updated. If that rate write time is greater than file dot get last write time target path, then we will copy it over and overwrite the older file in the path and increment the number of overwritten files. And then here are those get target file path where we pass it a rule, directory info folder, and a file, and say string target path is rule dot target path. And here's where we take the target path plus folder dot full name dot remove from start index zero rule dot source path dot length plus double backslash plus the file name. And that will give us the desired target path by um, parsing the source file information. And the same thing we do for the target folder path. The target path is rule dot target path plus folder dot full name dot remove from zero to the source path dot length. Now that we've got that appended, we return the target path. And then the last method we have is the save log to file where we pass it the rule and we're using a stream writer, new stream writer to the log path and say if we want to append it, we put true here. And then we just do a stream writer dot write line and we're doing the date time now to string. We're using a month, day, year, hour, minutes. And then what's the rule number? We, here we've got two rules. So we put in the rule number. We print out the source path, the target path. The is path is the target accessible property. So we know if it failed or not. And this gives us the number of new folders, the number of new files, and number of under, overwritten files, which takes those properties. And then the, we get the elapsed time of, the, of each rule zero colon in two rule dot elapsed time dot total seconds. And that's about it. So now let's run this application manually and see how it goes. Uh, again, we've got two rules. At this point, I've got this HP laptop turned off. So this first rule should fail and we should get something in the log telling us that. The second rule should work and I've got a um, file explorer down below showing the results of copying everything from the source to the target. And here's the target. It's empty right now. We should get a bunch of files appearing when we run this. And we'll also take a look at the generated log file. So I'm going to start this and we're waiting to see if it runs. And here's the target and here's all the files. It was successful. And here is the log file. It's got time and date, rule zero, rule one, source path, target path. Uh, this is one going to the inaccessible network computer. Is it accessible? It says false. So it says, no, we didn't run it. This one was true. This says no files were or folders were copied over, zero seconds elapsed. This one that worked shows that it was true. Two folders were copied, new files were made, and no overwritten ones, and it took 0.45 seconds. So you can see this works fine. It even handles inaccessible network drives. And all we have to do is add this executable to our task scheduler and set it for however often we want it to run. So that's about it. Um, if you like any of these videos, I encourage you to hit the like button, subscribe, hit the bell notifications. But most of all, please let others know that we're here so we get some views. Really appreciate it. Otherwise, take care. Have a really good day. Thanks.